Okay, we are going to start now uh, the practical session for our first demonstration. What we need to do, as we said, we need to start with Excel application scope, and we can actually get it from what from our activity, which is available on the left side. So before that, what I have done, I have actually created a sequence. So just to revise whatever we have done the previous session, we have created a sequence and I call it demo one. If you did not create, please go ahead and create. I would really encourage you to do the practical along with me so that if there is any problem you have faced, you can just write down in the comment area and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you want to really learn what we are going actually to do and you want to really get uh, the skills required to do Excel automation by the end of this course, you need to practice with me. And if you have, if you faced any challenges, please put that on the comment uh, area and I will try to uh, help you to actually resolve it. So from the left side, what we need to do, we need to uh, drag the Excel application scope. And as we said, Excel application scope will actually require us to pass uh, the file uh, path. So let us provide the file path. I need to go to property and then I will go to security. And then from here, I'm going to copy the file path. And as we said before, as we said before, everything should be coded. If I'm going to provide any sort of character, everything should be coded in programming. And as you can see, text must be coded. So even if I'm going to provide the folder or the file path, it should be coded. Coded means I need to start and end it with a double quotation. And then in between, I need to pass what? I need to pass my file path. File path, I need to pass it with the file name at the end and the extension also. So at the end, I need to include the file name and also the extension, clear? And these are the options which I was explaining on the previous uh, theoretical part. So I said that we have auto save, auto save is by default checked. So that means whatever changes we are going to do, it will be automatically saved. Create a new file. So if whatever I have provided is not there on the, on the, on the source folder, it's going to be created automatically. Uh, read only so if I want just to uh, read a certain uh, data I don't want to change any values available in Excel sheet I can keep this one checked and visible is what visible is actually in case I'm doing uh, any sort of automation I will do actually multiple steps so for me to do an automation I need to do multiple steps doing these steps usually it is going to happen from the GUI so that I will be able to see it I will be able to see all these steps which will be executed by the automation or by UI path itself. So if I'm not interested on getting and to, on seeing all of these steps, which is going to be performed by UI path, and they want it to be performed in the background, so I can just remove this visible check. I need to, after this, and as per our theoretical part, we need to start reading the range. So after I have uh, opened the Excel sheet, I need to read a range of data. So how I can get this activity? If you will go to available, so here we have on the activity we have available, we have multiple sections. What we are interested on to, uh, in this uh, course, we are interested on uh, exploring Excel activities. So for that, we need to go to Add Integration, and then we have Excel, and then after that, we have all of these activities which we can use to do some sort of automation. So now what we are going to do is, we are going to actually read a range. So we are going to select Read Range uh, Activity. And read range activity as per the description, it will read the values from a certain range available in Excel. So I'm going to drag it here into our sequence. And as I said before, it will request what? It will request to have the cheat name available on the workbook itself. Uh, and it is going to provide or it's going to ask us also to provide the range of the cells which I want to read data from. So by default, it is going to be uh, double quoted. Uh, if we don't have anything to provide, it's okay. It's going just to read the cells which is having values. If you want to read a particular range, you can specify it. But if you want to read everything and just keep it empty coated in this way. And then after that, what I need to do after I retrieve the data from Excel, I need to save it into a sort of variable. So how I, am, how I will be able to create a variable, now we are going to see that. On the output side here, if the moment I click on, on read range, I have also output uh, options available on the properties. In the output option, there is a chance for me to create actually my variable. So in the output section, I need to actually create a variable and I need to assign it for this activity. Why we need to assign a variable? Because I'm getting values from Excel, from Excel workbook. These values which I am going to retrieve it, it needs to be saved temporarily in the memory so that I can do something with it. 
So to save it on the memory, I need to create a variable which is going to work as a label for that memory address. For me to create a variable, I just need to go to the, uh, to the output field and then I need to click Control K from my keyboard. And then after that, I'm going to choose the variable name, the variable name I will call it data. And then after that, I will hit enter. So now I have created a variable, which is data. And this data as a variable, I have assigned this variable to this activity, to this activity, which is range, which is read range, which is read range. So this variable, which is data, it's been assigned and created for read range to get the data from Excel sheet. And if I want to see the list of all the variables available in my UI path, available in my sequence, I need to go to variable here, variable tab. And then after that, I'm going to see all the variables, the variables available in my uh, project. So until now, I have only one variable, which is data. And this data is actually holding what kind of data type? What kind of data types it's holding? It's holding data table. So this variable is going actually to hold a data, which is like uh, an Excel data, which is uh, columns and rows, which is database kind of data. So data table is actually a data type, which is uh, capable of holding columns and rows. After that, what we need to do is, after that, what we need to do is, we need to view the data. For us to actually display the data, the data should be in a string format. Right now, the data is in what? The data is in a data table format. Data table means columns and rows. What we need to do, we need to convert it into a string. We need to convert it into a string so that we can display it. For us to do that, we need to use another activity which we call it output data table. So this is the activity. This activity is what? This activity is going to actually write a data table to a string. So what happened is if I want to convert the values from a data table format into a string, I need to use output data table. So I'm going to drag it here below read range. An output data table, two things are required, the input and the output. Data table require us to tell from where uh, you know, I need to get the data. So the data table need to get the data from read range. From read range means from the variable generated from read range. That variable we need to highlight it on the input of data table. So here I need to highlight what I need to highlight the data. So, that, so I am telling this output data table activity, I am telling this activity to so go ahead to this variable and get the values from inside this variable and change it into a string. After you change it into a string, also I need to hold it in a different variable. So that variable is going to be actually uh, assigned on the output. So on the output, I need to create a variable and I need to provide it to this activity to save the values, which is in a string format. So I need to click on Control K, string data. So I'm, I'm actually creating the variable, which is going to hold the data on a string format. So now I have input and output. Now the, this activity will know how to work. Next, what I need to do, I need to view or I need to display these values which are now in a string format. For this to happen, I need to use message box. Message box is actually going to display the string values. But for that, what is required, I need to inform message box from where it should display. So the values, my values now are available where are available, are available on the string uh, data variable. So as you can see, the moment I go to variables, now I have two variables. The first variable is what? The first variable is the data, which is holding the values available uh, as a data table coming from a read range. The second one is a string data, which is actually going to be the result of what? The result of output data table, which is actually converting the data from a data table format into a string format. So what I need to do now, I need to provide this variable, which is having a string data in, uh, for what? For the message box. The name of the variable is what? String data. Done. I have no, I have no any sort of uh, error. What I need to do now, I need to run and I need to see if I will be able to get the values available in what in the Excel sheet. Let us hit run and see. So as you can see now, it's opening the, the, the Excel sheet and it is actually showing me all the values available inside. It's showing me all the values available inside and it is comma separated. All the values are comma separated. And as you can see, it is opening what? It's opening Excel. If I don't want to open the Excel, I can come here into Excel activities and I can click on it. I will get the properties. I can just remove this visible. I will uncheck it and then I will read it again. Let us see what is the difference. Uh, 
as you can see now because i have make it very invisible so it is not showing me any excel sheet opened so it is actually opening the excel sheet retrieving the data but i'm not getting to see all of these steps i'm just getting the output i'm just getting the final output which is the message box which is the displayed message so these are the data which was available and which was retrieved from excel sheet this was our first demonstration about how to read the data from excel sheet